Let's do another retirement deep dive where I look at a typical situation and I take you inside of the tent of a financial advisor and I say, here's how I look at the situation. Here's how I work with my clients. Okay, so in this case, the person's won. You know, they have a million dollars, they're 55 years old, and the question is, can I retire? And, and the short answer is yes. So you can turn off now if you want. Obviously, only 10% of Americans retire with a million dollars. But the question is, what kind of retirement do you want to have? And can you have that kind of retirement? And that's really what I want to, to show in these deep dives is kind of the trade-offs and in, in how a financial advisor will work with you on these trade-offs. Now, I'm not using the professional software that I would use at work. I'm using a free online software tool so that you can follow along at home. You can tweak some things. It's very high level. Uh, but I think it does a good job. So the, the, the website is honestmath.com and let's jump in. So this person's, again, they're single. They've got a million dollars. They're 55 years old. And in, in my nomenclature, they've won. Now it's just what type of prize do they want? Do they want the prize that they can get today? Do they want the prize that they can get in three years and five years and 10 years? And be really careful. You want to know what the trade-off is. Okay, let's jump in. The first thing is we just go into the personal information. You can see they want to, uh, they're going to retire uh, with a million dollars at 55, or we're exploring that. They were born in 1969, which makes, if I did my math right, makes them 55 at this time. Their Social Security is going to be $3,000 in today's dollars, uh, and they're going to, but they're going to take it importantly at full retirement age. So, so why did I? dollars Well, you can see here on the Social Security uh, website uh, that I looked up that the maximum Social Security check at full, uh, at full retirement age in the United States in 2024 is $3,822. That same person that, that's getting the max, if they take that early in 2024, they're going to get $2,710. Now, this person, they've got a million dollars. They probably earned decent money along the way. Uh, and that's why I chose what I did. I didn't choose the maximum, but I did say $3,000. Uh, and they're going to get that at full retirement age. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, let's see, pension. There's no pension. There's no other income. So the next top tab in honestmath.com is the portfolio. What's the balance of the portfolio? A million dollars. The mix of stocks and bonds, and you can make this whatever feels right to you. In my case, I made it 60-40. And then I come down here and I look at the expenses and I say they'd like to live on $5,000 a month. Now I'm assuming inflation to 2%. That's the same inflator that I use for Social Security. Um, and their effective tax bracket is 20%. Now, some people would say, hey, Asul, you always run these with high tax rates. Uh, but I want to remind you, this is, this is full in tax. So this is not just federal tax, but it's also your state tax. And some cities have income tax, so you have to look at that. Okay, let's keep going. Before we leave this page, I do want to point out that the taxable portion of the portfolio is 75%. Now, this is where um, what I call the three buckets come into play. If all of your money's in a regular 401k, a regular Roth, you know what the taxable, taxable portion of that portfolio would be? Be 100%, right? Um, and one of the nice things about retirement is if you've had a W-2 income your whole life, you really have not been able to control your tax rates. But now in retirement, you, you really can, particularly if you have these three buckets, the um, tax me later, which is the regular 401k, the regular IRA, the tax me uh, as I go account, which is your regular bank account, right? Every year as you earn interest. Uh, you're paying tax on that, a taxable brokerage account. Uh, as you sell stocks, as, as you receive dividends, you're paying tax on that, you know, regular taxable account. And then uh, what I call a tax me never account. And I like that because it's a simple name. It is misleading because you paid tax on the way in. When you, with, when you withheld money from uh, your paycheck, you, you did not put that money into your Roth 401k in pre-tax dollars. You had to pay tax on it. But essentially, once the money's in the account, it's a tax me never account. So if all of your money was in a Roth IRA, guess what that taxable portion would be? In theory, it'd be 0%, right? Okay, 
then what's the taxable portion of retirement income? In this case, it's, it's Social Security. And some of you may be surprised to see that that's 80% of it is going to be taxable income. Probably in this situation, this person is going to have a fair amount of their Social Security be taxed. I wouldn't be surprised if it's 80%. Prior to 1984, when Ronald Reagan passed the, the law uh, into, into effect, prior to that, there was no taxation on Social Security. And they made it such that at the time, only like 1% of the people had to pay tax on their Social Security. Very small percentage. But guess what trick they played? They didn't index that for inflation. So now a lot of us are, are caught into that 50% uh, area. And, uh, and then in the 1990s, Bill Clinton passed a law that Congress passed, obviously. Um, he signed into law, I should say, that uh, made up to 80% of Social Security taxable. So that's why I've got 80% uh, taxable portion. But you know what? It's online at honestmath.com. You can change these things as you want. Okay, the, the next section is called settings, which is really what the stock market returns and the bond market returns, what the predictions are. These are just the defaults of honestmaths.com. I did click, importantly, some called fat tails, which just says that in the stock market, instead of a nice smooth bell curve, the, the upper end of the returns and the lower end of the returns tend, it tend to happen more frequently than a, a Gaussian a bell curve distribution would predict. And that's called fat tail. So I check that. I, I suggest you keep it checked as well. Okay. And now let's look at the simulation. How does it look? How does it look for my friend that ha that's uh, 55 and has a million dollars? Well, if they're comfortable with half of the cases, the, well, let's start with the good news. Uh, the good news is the lucky people die with over at 90 with over a million dollars. So what you're looking at here is the top end of the pale blue range. Those are the lucky folks. So this it, honest math runs something that's called a Monte Carlo simulation. They take actual stock market results from the past and then randomize it. And, and their goal is to try to come up with 10,000 different lives and say, what would happen? Who got lucky? Who didn't get lucky, right? Some people, when they first retire, they're about to enter a bull market of untold proportions and they're they're super lucky because when their their balance or retirement account balance is the highest the market does well but you know what there's also people that um, retired in 2007 and they they had the 2008 2009 financial crisis where the s p from top to bottom dropped almost just just a little less than a 60 percent drop that'll take your breath away my friend here with a million dollar portfolio if they had had all their money in the stock market, don't do that. It's not financial advice, but it's a risky strategy. If they had had all their money in the in the stock market at that time, they would have lost six hundred, almost six hundred thousand uh, dollars, and and that takes your breath away. That takes a very strong person to to um, to survive and and to stay the course during a period of time like that. They, went for, they would have gone from a million dollars to about $400,000 in their portfolio. And that's scary, which is why we don't do 100% stocks when we're, when we're getting close to retirement age, when we're getting to the point where we're going to start taking money out of our account and not earn any money anymore. The way we look at risk changes, and, and frankly, it changes dramatically. Even if you've been very comfortable with the stock market uh, for a period of time, uh, in the past, let's say dot-com bubble burst, you never changed course and great financial crisis, you didn't change course. COVID, you were buying more, back up the truck, right? Well, that's a good sign that you stayed the course and that served you very well. But I want to caution you, it doesn't mean you're going to stay the course in the future once you retire. So I talked about the upper end of the pale blue. Those are the lucky folks, the people in the upper 20% of these, these distributions. So 2,000 the upper 2,000 people are at the, the top end of that blue curve. And then at the bottom end of that blue curve are the unlucky people. The, I should say the pale blue region. Those are the unlucky people that ran out of money at 72. So think about it. two different people, exact same asset allocation, exact same starting money. In one case, somebody could run out of money at 72. In another case, 
exact same scenario, exact same situation. They could end up passing away with over a million dollars. So there is some luck involved in it. And if you get unlucky, I don't want you beating yourself up uh, with the stock market. This is why we do the asset allocation. When, when people call up their financial advisor because the stock market's gone down and they say, hey, you know, what are you doing to protect me from this, from this market correction? The right answer, I think, from a financial advisor is, well, here's what we did for you three years ago or five years ago to prepare you for this. It's your asset allocation. So your, your stock allocation what is what protects you from scary times. Okay, and then in the median uh, line, which is that dark blue uh, line, that's, that is the 5,000th life out of the 10,000. Half the cases did better, half of the cases did worse. And unfortunately, you run out of money here at 81. Now, does that mean you can't retire? No, it doesn't mean you can't retire, right? We put into the initial, just as a reminder, let me look at my notes here. I believe we had on expenses, give me one second, we had $5,000 a month. Uh, so let's tweak it. Now, some people would say, yeah, uh, Sewell, I'm fine with $5,000 a month. And, you know, if I find myself in a, in a bad situation, I'll course correct later. And what's interesting here is look at that median case. Boy, you know, they went from a million dollars to $2 million in 10 years. They're feeling really confident only to find out, look at what was awaiting for them, even in a 60-40 portfolio. Uh, from 65 to, uh, to 81, they went through all of their money. So things can change and things can change quickly. So I do have some clients that would be okay with, with this type of outcome, but not many. So let's, let's go back to the drawing board and say, okay, instead of spending $5,000 a month, I'm only gonna spend $4,000 a month. Now, that's the only change that I'm making here is my expenses. I'm lowering my expenses from $5,000 to $4,000. Let's see what happens. We run uh, simulate again, and now we can see the unlucky folks run out of money at 83, which isn't great, but those are the unlucky folks, right? The median people run, uh, still have a million dollars um, when they, uh, when they uh, pass away. And the lucky folks have over $4 million to leave behind to somebody else. So uh, this looks a lot better. You know, a lot of my clients would be willing uh, to do that. So these are the scenarios. These are the types of things that you look at. And what I want to share too is think about what you're giving up. So this person might say, you know what, Asul, I've got a million dollars, but based on what you've shown me, I'm going to keep working to 60. Now, as a financial advisor, I've done my job at this point, right? I've, I've, I've shown them uh, what the scenarios are, and now it's time for them to make their decision. That's what a good financial advisor does. But here's what a great financial advisor does. A great financial advisor says, Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Client, Mrs. Client, um, yes, um, there is some risk associated with this, but what's the risk that... Maybe you have a health issue. Let's say you work another five years and you work till you're 60 and then you retire. And let's say you have a health issue at 62. You have a stroke and you're paralyzed on half of your body. I've, I've seen this happen. How are you gonna feel about the fact that you could have retired at 55 and you chose not to? So it's, it's, weighing, the, it's weighing the benefits, but it's also looking at the negatives and, and what's the cost? What are you giving up for that extra comfort I think for a lot of folks, when we really think about it, we're okay looking at the situation and saying, you know what, I have, I have an 80% likelihood of succeeding. And if something unexpected happens, you know, it's not a switch. It's not bad. It's not a switch that we flick on that, that it's either bad or good or good or bad, however you want to work that switch. Um, it's, it's really a spectrum. And we adjust along the way, and I think that's one of the values of having a financial advisor is you can have those conversations with them. You can make adjustments. The other thing I wanna point out is just how sensitive a financial plan is to the expenses. So if you tell your financial advisor, hey, I'm gonna be spending $4,000 a month in retirement, but you find you're spending $5,000 a month, $5,500 a month. Now, if you do that one or two months, over your retirement, is it gonna move the needle? No, it's not, don't worry about it. If you're doing that half of the time, 
If you're doing that every month, is it going to move the needle? Unfortunately, yeah, it is. So it's important to keep your financial advisor in the loop so that they can kind of see how you're doing and make tweaks when you still have 30 years to make adjustments, as opposed to now we're within 10 years and we've got to make bigger adjustments. You'd rather not do that if you can avoid doing that. Um, so those, those are the big trade-offs. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, I know you're going to find this video helpful where I talk about enjoying the journey until you get to retire, which is seven things that I want you to stop doing in your 50s to enjoy the journey until you get to retire. Thanks for watching this one. Bye-bye.